back to the channel and it is time to get started on the rest of the tiling and get that uh, process going on that uh, shower wall part this time we're going to be going well actually we're going to be finishing the bottom of the shower on the um, outside wall side of it yeah outside wall side of it that sounds right we're going to move to the shower head and uh, shower handle area where the valve is we're going to do that side of it then the back wall um, but I have to go in and I have to go to Lowe's and buy some more tile my lucky day because uh, I used enough tiles that I need more and plus somehow my addition, my subtraction, multiplication, division was lacking the day that I decided to run a tape measure to figure out how much I needed. So, with that being said, uh, we're going to go in and I want to show you the story poll first before we get too far along because I forgot to do that in the last video and I want to make sure you guys know what that is. So, uh, let's just jump in there really quick and uh, take a look. Okay, so the basic concept of a story pole is a stick, a rod, whatever you might have, could be wood. You want to make sure it is straight as possible because the last thing you want is something that's going uh, the other direction on you. So the point of a story pole is, well, basically to tell a story. It's a great concept, right? So how it works is, well, I guess I better show you this first, shouldn't I? Uh, get the cart in front of the horse. Uh, if you can see that right there, I've got a kind of some lines that are drawn on here of where the tile was separated with an eighth inch space around the floor, which was in a previous video, which I have in the description down below. Um, and basically what it's telling you is where each tile should line out at. So if you take the story pole and you put it at the corner of each side right here and we're just going to take this right here and say the pole is going to go here so you'd have a mark here 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 so forth and so on might as well go ahead and take that down So the basic concept of a story pole is that it has lines where you would be basically um, where the eighth inch gap would be for each tile. So as you can see, as I put a line here, here, and here, and then I would go all the way down to the bottom right there. And I would just take a level and run a level out so I kind of knew where the tile should go. It's the same concept that I used on this side of the tile wall that I'm going to use here and the tile on this side. Uh, now, you know, to be honest with you, I've seen a lot of seasoned, professional tiling guys use them. There's record of those guys actually using it. So they use it. They just don't tell you they use it unless you're the one getting the tile in the house and you see it. Um, it's easy. It's fast and it makes your life a little bit more sim simplicated. Story poles can be used for anything. I mean, if you were putting in, say, a um, stairs or like a turnabout style stairs, you can use a story pole to figure out where you would be putting in place in your steps in order to make code, where it would flow really nice. So it's not like story poles are, you know, some weird fad or something like that. We use them. People use them. I've used them on other stuff. That's the reason why I'm using it on tile, so that way I can stay consistent with all my tiles.
I'm thinking this blade is worn out already. Um, I can't believe it would be. I mean, it's brand spanking new and I haven't even run that many tiles through it. And for $75, it better not be worn out already.
Look at the amount now. I even have some over there and some over there. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I've gone through some tile. <laughs> some of it's my fault. Some of it just cracked. Uh, the blade has gotten dull. Um, so I'm having to do a little bit of extra work, but it is what it is. We're getting through it. Um, so we're on to the next. All right, everybody. So uh, you kind of saw that I kind of got the uh, shower up to that point, the tiles up to the shower at that point. So what I need to do now is I actually need to cut out the hole around the shower valve. And you, as you can see, I kind of got started with that. So, um, I didn't show you everything on the first tile or how I was doing it. So I'm going to do that really quick, just so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm doing. Okay, so just an all conversation here. How I did that is probably not the best use of a wet tile saw blade. Um, but sometimes you do it with what you got, and that's what I did. So I went ahead and did it. And on top of that, full disclosure, that blade is as dull as it can be. So it's not going to hurt it any more than it already is. So let's go in and get those pieces on the wall. Let's get going on this uh, before the mud dries. Oh, <laughs> 
All right, everybody, so it is a bit gloomy out there. As you can see, it is raining today, and uh, I'm not going to go stand out and rain cut tiles. So um, I did not get the back wall finished uh, like I was hoping to today, so uh, I guess that's going to be the other part of the video. Plus, I'm thinking about throwing a curveball into that back wall still. I still have not really made up my mind kind of what I really want. I, I kind of want to throw something in there, but I'm not sure yet, so... Uh, I'll be working on that for the next video along with hopefully going ahead and getting the um, uh, grouting done at the same time. That way we can get this kind of wrapped up and stuff. So uh, let me just jump in. We'll show you what I've got going on and kind of go from there. So I got everything but the bottom. And I know I said I was going to do the bottom on the other side. But I've decided I'm just going to wait and do the bottom all the way around. I think that'll make life a lot easier. That way I don't have to mess with three separate ones so anyway i've got everything on there uh it is all set up ready to go uh i've got the hole cut out for the uh sh shower head uh and if you guys can remember that i showed you i've got the uh hole cut out around the uh um handle area yeah there we go so uh, I still have the back wall to do, but again, it's uh, raining, so I'm not going to even try to mess with it today. Um, I'll wait till it dries out. I'm, I'm not that stressed about trying to get this done, but uh, got one side done, got the other side done. This, I can tell you, was ten times easier uh, than the other side there. So, um, yeah, that's where we're at. I've got my ledger board already set up there, ready to go. Um, but I, I haven't decided what I want to do here yet, to be honest with you. So I guess having it rain ended up being a good thing. So with that, it is another long video and I apologize. I cut up, sped out, sped out, sped up. I, I sped up as much as I possibly could in order to get everything in here for this one. Um, I know that you're probably going to have some questions about, uh, the muddy part of it. You probably saw at the beginning of it on the bottom that I just kind of troweled it on nice and smooth and I took and uh, pulled the uh, trowel across to uh, get a quarter by quarter um, trowel mark across it. I was actually going to do the whole thing, but when I did that it just, I don't know, I guess it felt weird and I just decided to go back to what I was doing originally and, and did it that way. So, you know, six and a half, one to a dozen, as long as it works, death it falls off and nothing leaks. I'm good. Uh, so with that, I just want to say thank you very much for taking the time to watch the video. I really appreciate it. If you would, smash that like button, get the YouTube algorithm going so more people can find me. And I really, really appreciate the time you all take to watch my videos. So have a good day. Have a good weekend, rest of your weekend. And uh, hopefully your Monday starts off great. Talk to you all later.